Okay, um, so I had a feeling too that that when those cops came to my door, I had a feeling that that woman was there listening to the whole interview, um, the questioning of that police officer, him on one side of the screen and me on the other, because one of the cops stayed kind of back down towards the driveway area, and I think that he was there with her. He was standing down there with her. I, I can't prove that. It's just something I think. Um, anyway, he had informed me. He said this, you know, this whole conversation is being recorded and pointed to some little device on his belt. And at first I was kind of like put off like, well, shouldn't have he told me that from the beginning? Don't you have to inform someone they're being recorded? But um, at that point, you know, I felt fairly confident that I, you know, I had told the truth. Um, and, and he said that even if I was telling the truth, that all I did was bang on the window when I had that knife in my hand, he said that if someone perceives that they are being threatened, then that is assault. Anyway, I kept arguing. You know, I was hysterical. I, I couldn't focus my thoughts. And... Even though my mom came out and said, you know, she never opened that door to that woman. She never opened that door once. She never left this house. Um, but every time the cop went to talk, I, I mean, I, I was arguing and I probably was being disrespectful. I mean, I was hysterical. And so he said, you can either let me finish what I'm saying or I can arrest you. And I said, you can't arrest me. And he said, well, we'll see about that. And no, I said, you can't arrest me without a warrant. And he said, yeah, well, I'll be back with one of those. And so he left and I thought, I felt like sort of, you know, obviously he can't. There's no judge that's gonna hear this story and say, oh, okay, we have a lot of evidence here. But they came back. They came back the next day with a warrant. I was in the garage smoking and um, my mom, told the police officers that I wasn't home and uh, I think they knew she was lying but they said um, they said that I need to turn myself in well now I'm petrified I mean you know I'm too agoraphobic to answer the door and now I have to go be in jail and uh, we waited till the next morning because we thought that I would see a judge right away and that I wouldn't have to stay a night in jail and that was not true so I spent three days in jail and um, it, that was a horrible horrible humiliating experience they were cruel they were rude at first I was afraid to because I hadn't mentioned any of my any of my um, mental health problems that night when the cops first came, I started to think in my mind that if I tell them now, then it'll make her story seem more believable because, you know, she's crazy. That's the kind of thing crazy people do. So when they asked me when they were um, processing me, they were asking me if I suffer from depression or any mental illnesses and I just said um, I suffer from depression. I try to make it sound as, as mild as possible without you know making my case look worse for me and uh, they asked what if I take any medications and I was like oh I can't remember what they're called and I gave them my doctor's number. I said you can call him and uh, the woman said Oh, look at that. This is my alarm. It's time to take my medication. Don't want to miss that. So, uh, the intake woman said, um, she said, look, you can either tell us what medications you take. She goes, otherwise, we're going to have to um, put you in solitaire and someone's gonna have to watch you to make sure you don't care. I mean, she made it sound like, it was like a threat. She's like, look, 
you either tell us these things or we're gonna make things worse for you and uh, it was just a horrible experience I had some withdrawals in there because I I did kind of lie about my medications and um, some girl threatened me I was pretty scared and what else so anyway um Dr. Sachs never made any phone calls to defend me to say yeah I've been seeing her for these things he really just he really dropped the ball he just totally abandoned me when I needed my doctor the most my sister paid $8,500 for a lawyer who really did nothing in the end the, it was drawn out forever. Um, they kept um, postponing the date. Excuse me, my medicine. They kept postponing the um, the pre-trial or whatever they call it. So, you know, for like three months, I was like so stressed out, worrying, am I going to go to jail? You know, because if they can arrest me for not having done anything wrong in the first place, I mean... It's not much of a stretch to think that they could put you in jail for a long time. And um, in the end, the police officers and the woman that made the um, accusation did not show up in court, so it was dismissed. So I, I have a lot of anger about that whole ordeal. Because dismissed isn't not guilty. It's not innocent. And so now I have a record. And I didn't do anything wrong. That was a really horrible experience. And I bet a lot of people, like me, with the problems that I have, have similar problems. You know, and part of my agoraphobia, I think, stems from the fact that for a long time, it seemed like whenever I went out anywhere to a store or whatever, I was always having these confrontations, you know, sort of hostile confrontations. I wasn't getting violent or anything, but it just seems like I couldn't get along with anyone in any situation. I'd be offended or insulted or um, I read things into things people would say that probably weren't there. Um, and so I think that's, that's mostly what the agoraphobia stems from is just wanting to not have any trouble. Um, we don't have the expungement law in New Mexico. The Senate's been trying to push that through and I hope they do because if they do, I'm, I'm gonna do everything I can to have that taken care of. I can't believe how much anger I still have over that whole thing and I really need to start learning some skills in regards to letting so much of the junk go you know it's only I'm hurting myself you know all right well I'm almost at nine minutes so I'm gonna start another one but um this thing with the camera where the audio is out of sync with the camera I didn't remember that happening the last few videos I made so if you guys know what this is about can somebody email me because Dang, it's a brand new computer. All right, well, um, I'll be back in a minute. Uh, you know, I really hope I am not talking to myself. I hope there is somebody watching these things. Or I'm just going to feel like the biggest ass. All right.